So as a provider of treatment, I often get people asking me what to do, parents of suffer adult sufferers who are living still at home, and I ask, I've been asked often how to motivate their adult children to engage in treatment, to move on with their lives, or what to do if the client decides they don't want to get treatment, but they still live at home, and so there's a few things that people can do. Um, first of all, we have to understand that treatment for OCD and related disorders has to be volitional. So it has to be their wish to get well. Uh, nobody can force them to get well. We can encourage them, we can entice them, we can give uh, incentives, we can uh, find out information about how well, how good it is to be well. But ultimately, when a person decides that they don't, or unable to, or they don't want to um, engage in treatment, there are some resources that the parents need to then know, okay? So often, we will have to tell parents that um, they probably could use some help navigating the adult who's living in their home with an untreated condition, and how can they live with that situation? And that would in entail some things. Some parents are willing to, to say, it's okay, you can live in my house, but this is, these are the boundaries that I'm going to set for you. Um, and you can use the basement if you want to, but your OCD cannot bring all of its um, you know, symptoms into the rest of the home. Uh, I encourage parents to give their adult children a budget so that they can work within that budget. And uh, it, it, it serves two purposes. One is to uh, help the young adults become an adult and know how to live within a budget. Because uh, even if you have a condition, you still have to learn to live within a budget and, and know what, what uh, the, the cost of life is. And then the parents, it's helpful to them because then they don't feel that either they're being um, used or I don't like the word enabled, but I use the word recruited. It's a nicer word to, to explain what it is that happens. And then not resentful, because what happens is if somebody is living in their home, parents know there's treatment out there and they're willing to help with the treatment, but the adult is not interested uh, in, in getting the treatment, then the parents need to feel less resentful about that situation. And so that's just one way of looking at it. Uh, in terms of helping somebody be motivated, sometimes making it a little bit less comfortable to keep the OCD is a way to do it. Uh, it doesn't have to wait, you don't have to wait until the, your, your children are adults. It's, it's true for young kids too, is if parents make it less comfortable to have OCD rule the roost, it's more likely that the sufferer will say, okay, so I'm gonna treat this because I'm now very uncomfortable and so I don't want to have OCD anymore. And so what did you say I need to do about it? And uh, so just not making it so comfortable to have OCD rule everybody and govern everybody. This is not to say that we're not empathetic, we understand nobody has opted to have OCD, nobody loves having OCD, it's not about controlling the situation, it's just that some people have a hard time um, fighting a condition that they have. But we still have to protect the rest of the, the family and sometimes it's siblings that suffer and, and other situations. It's sometimes a financial burden. So we want to empower everybody to get well in, in a way and uh, the OCD sufferer to get treatment but the parents and the siblings to live their lives not influenced so much by the, the, the effect of the condition. This, of course, is all easier said than done, uh, but we do encourage people to seek help on how to implement some or all of those suggestions.